the other thing you want to check with the eyes in particular is that they're able to close and they're not because I did too much morphing around the eyes. So there's two ways to fix this. I'm going to show you both ways because I have two eyes to fix. It works out nicely. Um, one way is using a per parameter. Yeah. One way is using a parameter dial. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and because that's pretty even, I'm going to go ahead and see if this doesn't fix it. In fact, I know it does and I know the amount. And I'm going to do this one, I, I know the amount. So we're like that, and that fixes it. I don't want users to have to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new dial under the morph loader, so I'm keeping everything together. I'm going to create a new property. I'm going to call that E for expression, JCM, because it's a joint corrective morph, even though it's an expression, it's more than one joint still. And we'll go character name, and then what it does, it does the I close left. The tab, it carries it down there. We're going to wind up hiding this eventually so we don't really worry about anything else. I'm going to go ahead and set the limit because I like limits set. Now I want that morph, I want this parameter, I want this dial to do the eyelids um, which are currently dialed in so I'm going to go ahead and do ERC freeze right now. You can see here it's got the eye close. I don't want this dial to control eye close. I don't want this dial to control the head. I just want this dial to control the eyelids upper and lower. And of course, when you hit the button, it resets everything. So I'm going to Control Shift F just to make sure everything really reset. I'm going to dial my head back in. I'm going to close that eye again. And we'll go to my new dial here, and you can see that it works. It closes the eye just fine. There's two ways to set this up so that it applies automatically. Um, they both give you the same end results. It's one way, but there's two ways to go about it. There's probably more than two ways, but I'm going to show you the two ways. Um, the first way is the way I typically don't do it. Um, but here's the way it goes. You've got all the dials um, that are involved dialed up, and you're going to go find the find the dial over here, the eye closed left, the one that, that does the controlling, I guess you can call it. We're going to go ERC freeze. And then over here we're going to check on attenuate, or we're going to leave it as subcomponents. We've got to select the node, which is going to be the male, and we're going to select a property, which is going to be over here. It's going to be our head morph, and the, whoops, yeah, it's going to be the head morph. And the attenuate, this section up here, this is the multiply of the ERC formulas. And the rule of thumb, the, the standard practice, is that you multiply against your character. And so we're going to apply, we're going to multiply against the head, it's going to apply to the control eyes left. And that's the one that's left. Yeah, that all works out. So we hit, hit OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and restore the figure just in case. I'm going to apply that eye close again. I'm going to come over here and apply my head. And you can see that the EJCM automatically applies along with the head. And then just to double check, we're going to undial the eye close. Come over here and make sure that the EJCM is undialed. Okay, and it has. And here's the other way you can go about setting up an EJCM. We'll do the other eyes. Let me turn them over here. We'll do the other eye. And get the head morph dialed in. And we're going to close that eye. And then we're going to go to mesh resolution, kick it back down into base, and we're going to export that. That's the export button. I got one over here too. It's normally over here by default. So you can go eh, file, export. I put a button over here because I'm always using it along with morph loader, so it made more sense to me. And I'm going to export EJCM Bob I close right OBJ. I'm not actually going to export that because I've already fixed that one. I don't want to write right over it. But you export the OBJ, take it into your modeler, do the modeling to fix that, and then we're going to bring it back in. We'll bring it back in the same state change that back it doesn't matter but we're going to bring it back in with the same state the eye is still closed um, the head is still dialed it's the same state as it was when we exported I'm going to go into morph loader pro select my object the name is right and this time I'm going to go ahead and say reverse deformations yes because I wanted to take out the head morph and the default eye close um, effect so it's basically I'm going to subtract everything that's happening right now is going to subtract that from my morph when it creates the morph. So now we've got this one here, which is my eye close right, and you can see that works. 
And here's the way I usually set up ERC when there's a multiply involved, just because I don't know it's simpler for me. But I'm going to go ahead and show that morph in the, or the yeah, that's morph. Show the morph in the property hierarchy. I'm going to expand it down to the controllers. I'm going to set up the controllers. I'm going to take the full head morph Bob. And that's going to be the multiply. And I'm going to go find the other dial, the eye close. And that's going to be the additive. So I just drag and dropped them over there. And you can see they're set up right there. There's that, there's that. So now if I undo all that, I got to control shift F. There you go. Restore it. Restore it. So I dial in the head morph, everything's fine. If I close, that was the right eye wrong now. Close the right eye. And you can see it's closed, so obviously that morph's kicked in. And when you undial the head, that morph undials. So it only only works with the head and doesn't mess up everything else. So what I'm missing now, we can do a control dial. I'm just going to create a new dial over here. I'm just going to right-click and create a new property, and we're going to call this Control Bob. Over here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to name it just Bob. And I'm going to leave everything else the same for now except for the limits because i got a thing about limits. And now, of course, right now that doesn't do anything. And I've still got the eye close. So I'm going to Control shift f to restore the figure again. Still doesn't do anything. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to apply the values, the dials that I wanted to apply. And then I'm going to do the ERC freeze. And you can see it's going to apply Bob and Bob's head. So now this dial controls those two dials. And I got one dial that applies Bob. Something a lot of people do, um, especially for the female characters, is they'll include custom nipples and navels. Those particular morphs um, duplicate morphs that are already in the base figure. And we really don't want a bunch of character specific morphs that just duplicate existing morphs. So we'll say that we usually have those, we have those set up as MCMs, as morph corrective morphs or morph controlled morphs, whichever way you want to think about it. And I'm going to go ahead and do a, a Bob Navel um, just to show how to set that up. And again, it's going to be affected with the body. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to dial the body in. And I'm going to dial up the waist and the navel. And again, you'd go ahead and you'd export this out to your modeler and call it MCM Bob's Navel. Take it into your model, do your modeling to get your custom navel, and then save that back out. And then, again, with the navel still applied, because we're going to want it to apply with the navel when Bob's body is applied. So we're going to leave those two dialed in. We'll go to Morph Loader Pro, and we're going to load in Bob's navel. And again, we're going to go reverse deformations, yes. And that's going to back out both Bob's body shape and the navel that already exists from those morphs, from this morph. Say OK. So now here we have Bob's navel. And if I apply it, you can see that's Bob's navel. That's Bob without Bob's navel. That's the default navel. That's Bob's navel. And again, I want this navel to work when the navel dial and Bob's body are dialed in. So I'm going to go to the property hierarchy, expand it to the controllers. And Bob's body is going to be the multiply because you use the character as the multiply. And then I'm going to go find that navel dial. And that's going to be the additive. And so now, control shift F. Bob's body is applied and the navel is applied. The Bob's navel kicks in automatically. And when Bob's body is not being used, Bob's navel isn't being used. So those are all cool and done up.